It's a field of 65. Now it's a field of 64. I got 86 to win. Well, I know you do, but the first bid <laughs> has been weeks. handed out. Cornell is in. champion of the Ivy League, the Big Red, going into the NCAA tournament. One down and 64 spots to fill. Guys, it is now time for the Pontiac Game Changers. Kansas State and Kansas, who do you have? Well, for me, it's Phil Walker. He was a game changer in that first game. He had 22.5 rebounds in 3-3. Three, three. It's a tough matchup for Kansas. He put a smaller defender. He can post up. He put a bigger defender. He can blow by him. He is a guy that can really take this game over and take the pressure off of Michael Beasley down low in the paint. I'm going with Mariel Chalmers. He's going to be the spark to light the fire tonight for the JR. He leads the Big 12 in steals. 19 points versus K-State the last game that they lost over there in that. 12 points per game overall this season, but shooting 45% of three. He's the guy to get this team fired up and get it done in a payback game. I assume it's my turn because I can't hear a thing in here. <laughs> this place is awesome. Brandon Rush is my game changer. Averaging 14 points per game in Big 12 play. He can shoot the ball from the perimeter. If he is aggressive, he can be a difference maker in this game. Don't make it too complicated, fellas. Here's the game. Oh, Michael Beasley, <laughs> the oh, leading really? scorer in the Big 12. Boy. Three times this year, he's gone for 40 points. You're really a risk rebound. Taker on this one, aren't He you? will change the game one way or the other. He is the biggest chance that Kansas State has to come in here and win this one. Frank Martin is going to be really upset with you because usually your game changers go for a bagel. <laughs> you got door seat. Yeah. <laughs> you don't really think this guy's going to score one point tonight, do you? Do you really believe that, no. Hubert Davis? <laughs> I'll give you the first five minutes. I'll give, I'll give you the first five minutes. Hey, you have to know when you're struggling. I got a go-to guy. Beasley's it. He's the bunny. Yeah, that box of one at Nebraska. He didn't score for nine minutes. Hey, let's, let's yeah. go with the Pontiac Prime Time picks. Who do you have? K-State or Kansas? You know, I have Kansas. I think they're going to do a terrific job on the role players defensively. I think Sharon Collins, who's been struggling, he's going to have a big game tonight for Kansas. Jayhawks, get it done. That's a payback game. You know what that means. You can beat on the road, beat them at home. This is not your house, Mr. Beasley. This is Jayhawk land. You know, I still can't hear you, and I like it better this way. <laughs> uh, I'm going with Kansas. I think Kansas' defense is going to make the difference. Kansas and Kansas State coming up at the top of the hour. This is an intense rivalry on any circumstance. When you add the fact for the first time in nearly a quarter of a century, Kansas lost to K-State in the first meeting in Manhattan. We'll see if they can answer this time. Time to join Dan Schulman. Reese, the fans here at Allen Fieldhouse are ready for some payback tonight. Just over a month ago, freshman Michael Beasley of Kansas State led the Wildcats to an upset victory over the Jayhawks. But tonight, seventh-ranked Kansas is looking to return the favor and avoid the season sweep. It's Dickie V, K-State, and KU next. Settle in, folks. ESPN Prime. Kansas coach Bill Self says this is the toughest ticket for a game in this building since he got here five years ago. It is sold out. It is fired up. It is Saturday prime time presented by DirecTV, all a part of Judgment Week presented by John D. It is in-state rivals, Kansas State and Kansas from a hot and sold out Allen Fieldhouse here in Lawrence. And the significance of this game has grown with the events earlier today as Texas loses at Texas Tech. A win tonight for the Jayhawks, and they move into a tie for first with Texas atop the Big 12. Michael Beasley has done so much for Kansas State this year. The best freshman in America, maybe the best player in America, and of course a lightning rod for Jayhawk fans here tonight. Now, he seems fine with Kansas players. Think back to last summer. Here's what Michael Beasley said. We'll beat him in our place. We'll beat him in their place. We'll beat him in Africa. Wherever we play him, we'll beat him. And you know what? So far, they have backed it up. They beat him in Manhattan just over a month to go. Can they beat him again tonight here in Lawrence? What kind of a game have we got here tonight, Jay? Well, you talk about this matchup. You talk about Michael Beasley, the best player in America. Watch him tonight. You're watching America's number one player. He better be Hercules tonight because talking to Bill Self and the Jayhawks, they are fired up. I'm telling you, revenge factor. They were embarrassed down in Manhattan. They were 
physically beaten by the team, and then it was Manhattan Mania, and since then, they have struggled. Yes. They have now come in this game, losing three in a row, they've lost four in their last five, and now a little jeopardy with an NCAA berth, a lot at stake. And Kansas has not lost a game at home all season. It may be three on one, four on one, five on one tonight, but our Colonial Life one on one features Michael Beasley. Well, take a look at those numbers. I mean, amazing. First in the nation in rebounding. Third in scoring. Look at Darrell Arthur. He's a key player. They have to go through him to establish balance offensively. Time now to check out our starting lineups. Brought to you by Papa John's. We begin with the Wildcats, a couple of seniors in the backcourt. Clint Stewart and Blake Young. Up front, Michael Beasley is joined by Andre Gilbert and redshirt freshman Bill Walker. For the Jayhawks, an experienced, talented bunch. A three-guard look, Russell Robinson, Mario Chalmers, and the ultra-talented Brandon Rush. Up front, Darrell Arthur and the vastly improved Darnell Jackson. Well, what is all this like for Michael Beasley? We're going to find out. He kind of had a, a little grin on his face. A little grin on his face as he surveyed the scene here. He has not really played in an environment like this. Talked about the game at K-State. Dick said that was his first ever rivalry game. This is his first ever rivalry game on the road. Well, he responded in that game. He had 25. They sort of controlled him early in the game. Collapsed on him. Had eight at halftime. Then he stepped out and hit three big threes that really broke it open. Darrell Arthur draws the early assignment on Michael Beasley, who can score inside and out. Blake Young and a foul on Darnell. Jackson of the Jayhawks as we bring in Aaron Andrews. Dan, it's been the most talked about quote of the weekend. Of course, you mentioned what Michael Beasley said, and he told us this afternoon he doesn't regret saying that the, he would beat Kansas anywhere. He said he'd say it again if he had to. Now, it was interesting talking to some of the Jayhawks players. Darrell Arthur, who actually played with Michael Beasley this past summer with the U19 Team USA. He said, I know the guy. He likes to talk. I don't really know if anyone pays attention. Everyone's attention in that comment. In fact, one of the best quotes I heard, if Michael Beasley goes to Africa to play the Jayhawks, he's going to be the only one there. No one's showing up. I'll tell you one thing. Just like Muhammad Ali, you can brag, baby, if you can back it up. Yep. And this guy has been able to back it up all year, his performance. I remember Muhammad Ali telling Sonny Liston, you the crowd dares to call me a bum. I'll knock you out of yeah. one. And as Reggie Jackson once said, Dick, they don't boo nobody. So they may have booed Michael Beasley here tonight, but he has earned that boo. Darrell Arthur, who's got a very bright future himself, ties the game. You know, Arthur was a key player for them in their last win. They decided to go inside to Arthur to establish inside outside. Bill Walker steps out of bounds and turns it over. Frank Martin, the first year head coach of Kansas State. They need a big game out of Walker, 18 to 9. As you mentioned, they have lost three in a row. There are three leaders scores are all freshmen a very young team well you know keep the numbers watch on Walker he was 0 for 14 against Texas in a heartbreaking loss but they played Texas really tough but you're not going to win when he goes 0 for 14 Russell Robinson lays it in Kansas up by two clear out for Russell Robinson his mom's in the house tonight got a chance to talk to her before the game Beasley driving on Darnell Jackson and lays it in he's the most multi-dimensional freshman you've seen in many many a year. I tell you, Durant was certainly super, but this guy is so physical as well. And their good friends actually played together on an AAU team when they were 11 years old. Foul on Beasley. Of course, that's going to be a huge factor if he can stay out of foul trouble and play a lot of minutes. Well, there he is right now in triple threat position. The great first step. You know, I talked about it on game day. I mean, you took Durant, you took Beasley. How could you go wrong? Right. It's like the beauty contest. I mean, who do you like? I mean, do you like, for example, someone like Giselle Bunchin? Or do you like <laughs> Jessica Biel? I mean, how are you going to go wrong? Brandon Rush. How are you going to go wrong? Brandon Rush for three. I told you before this game, they better have their A-plus game on, Kansas State, or this could be a long, long night. Kansas is focused. They are ready. I watched them in a warm-up. This club is mentally ready for tonight. When K-State beat Kansas just over a month ago in Manhattan, their guards were terrific. Beasley and Walker had good games, but the guards chipped in as well. Well, Beasley's second foul day. And that is major. Frank Barnes got to go to the bench already. 
I'll tell you who was big. Poland. Poland came in and played really well in that game. He had 20. What are the Zebras doing? They're taking the kid, putting him on a bench already? I mean, come on. Oh, oh. Bill Self's got to like that call. Two fouls, barely two minutes in on Michael Beasley. Ron Anderson takes his place. Everything has just changed in this game, Dick. And there's a foul on Bill Walker. Bill Self, fifth year as head coach of Kansas. He's got as deep and as talented a team as he's had, and that's saying something. He's been to the Elite Eight twice with Kansas. they got to be a little bit more consistent away from home when you talk greatness. They're certainly practically unbeatable here in a rate team at all at home, but you're going to win on a roll like North Carolina and Memphis. Clint Stewart, no. Rebound Jackson. Here comes Rush. Rush is so talented, so skilled. Arthur inside over Walker. Big time performer. They're going inside again, Dan. Just what we talked about. Inside, outside. Unlike K-State, so reliant on Beasley and at times Walker. Kansas so balanced. Four players that are better than 12 points per game. And there's a foul inside. Will it be Arthur? Yes, it will. First ball by Kumail Arthur is first personal foul. Second team. Take a look at the inside. Darrell Arthur operating one on one. A little fadeaway jump shot. Great touch. I'll tell you one thing you're looking at Michael Beasley on that bench. As a coach, you got to look at that scoreboard. If he starts to get a little bit away, you got to play him. You can't worry about those two fouls. Michael Beasley with two fouls in the first two minutes of the game. Darrell Arthur coming off a big game Wednesday night at Iowa State. The Jayhawks rediscovered their strength on the inside, pounded the ball inside, and Arthur responded with an 18-point game. Sasha Khan in off the bench early, comes up with a rebound. Well, Khan played well in that game as well. Arthur again. They got no matchup inside for him. It's a mismatch. He's so skilled offensively. Frank Martin's got some decisions to make. And one of them may be Mr. Beasley's got to get on the court. This ESPN telecast is available in high definition on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia. Back inside historic Allen Fieldhouse, the worst of all scenarios early for Kansas State. Michael Beasley, two fouls on the bench. Kansas looking for revenge, as it is, up seven in the early going. The last time they swept Kansas, back in 1982-83, they used to have such great teams on the Jack Hartman, who did a phenomenal job. Think about all the great players. Years ago, Bob Boozer was incredible as a player. Arthur out, Jackson back in. Walker gets it. You were talking about that 0 for 14 game on a Monday. He thinks one of the reasons he couldn't find any of his headbands. He had to play without a headband for the first time all year. Well, so Chalmers, somebody got to play some defense. Chalmers just went coast to coast, and then he came back and stole the ball. Five straight makes for Kansas. Now they've got a turnover. I told you this club is ready. I told you this club is ready. I told you, Danny, yes. I told you before the game. They are ready. They were totally embarrassed down here in Manhattan. All Michael Beasley can do is look on from the bench. Darnell Jackson to the line, the line for Kansas. One of the most improved players in this league, maybe in the country, with Julian Wright to go to the NBA. Jackson's numbers have gone way up. Look at Khan battling for the ball. And it'll be a held ball. That's what Bill Self wants more than anything. Get down on the play. floor, play tough. He wants to play tough, play physical. He thought up in Manhattan that they were pushed around and they didn't respond in a positive way. Hey, you got some kids here playing with heavy hearts, though, in terms of Darnell Jackson and Stewart as well. Both lost cousins. Could you believe this? Shot young people, lives taken for them. Just unbelievable scenarios. Just within the last couple of weeks for Darnell Jackson, the latest in a long line of family and friend tragedies. Uh, this young man, number 32, has had to endure more than anybody should. And for Roderick Stewart, it was a cousin of his, but an adopted brother, a cousin who was adopted he got and, shot became in the his, and, and became his brother. Uh, already felt like a brother, literally became his brother, and he passed away within the last couple of weeks as well. They adopted him when he was like in about the third grade. Yeah. He got shot in the car right outside of Seattle. And 
offensive foul, a screen away from the ball, Darnell Jackson. You know, Darnell Jackson, you mentioned he lost his grandmother in a car accident. His uncle was really murdered. It's unbelievable what he's had to face. And his mother was in that car accident when his grandmother died. She was seriously injured. And Darnell Jackson actually left the team for a while last year, just had to get away from it, had to get it back home. But he seems to be in a better place emotionally this year. Well, you know, sometimes you don't realize what these kids face. We see it. Almost another turnover. The kid Stewart for when you look at Kansas State, his mom was sitting That's right. right behind That's the correct. bench. Vanessa gets Notre Dame, and she passed away to cancer. Right now, K State can't even get a shot up. Brandon Rush. Look at Roderick Stewart inside. Look at Roderick Stewart. Are you serious? He told us before the game that he wanted them to be aggressive. Is there any doubt they're being? The Jayhawks came to this game looking for revenge. They got out tough, Bill Self said, in Manhattan. So far tonight, that has not been the case. Everything has gone the Jayhawks' way. They're scrapping hard for the ball. And Michael Beasley has picked up two early fouls and has gone to the bench indefinitely for Kansas State. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by DirecTV. Must have equipment for any sports fan. And in part by Valvoline's Max Life. Drive it forever. Back here in Lawrence, Kansas, inside Fog Allen Fieldhouse. All Kansas in the early going, and as Dick said off the top, Kansas State has lost three in a row coming into this game. They're now 18 and 9 in the season, 8 and 5 in conference play. Three losses in a row, four out of five. If they lose again tonight, it's four in a row with just two regular season games left at home to Colorado and then at Iowa State. Iowa Are State. they in danger of slipping onto the bubble? Well, absolutely. I take a look at their numbers right there. Just think about this to put it in perspective. Bob Huggins was very upset set last year they were 10 and 6 and they were left out 10 and 6 Syracuse was 10 and 6 last year should have been in the tournament they were left out if they lose two of their last three games I'm a dummy but that's nine and seven and that means you're begging to get in that could come down to how they do in the big 12 tournament exactly Gilbert cannot finish and another rebound for Khan. Beasley remains on the bench. Such an unusual set of circumstances. You'd never consider putting a player back in with two fouls this early in the game. But does Frank Martin have to consider it? Well, he's got to keep it in his mind. I think he'd go a couple more minutes and see what happens. Sean is the law for Khan. If they, and a foul. It's going to be a walker, I think. If they go on a spurt, Kansas, you definitely got to bring these leaders. Well, now Bill Walker, their second best player, just picked up his second foul. I'll tell you this, though. You see, you can't spend your time crying and whining and worrying about the referees. You got to play basketball. And Frank, right now, they're getting a little too concerned about all that. Just got to play. Frank Martin's trying to tell the officials that it was Ron Anderson, not Bill Walker, who committed the foul. The officials will keep the call on Walker. Anonymous is the free throw. Now Walker is going to have to sit down as Darren Kent, a 6'10 junior from Apple Valley, Minnesota, checks into the game for him. You know, tough time for Frank Morton on that sideline because they were really doing so well. They were really dominating the offensive boards, but they've really slipped. And they were tough losses. The one thing about them, they've lost all single-digit losses in those four that they've lost in a row on a row. All right now they've got 42 points per game over on the bench in foul trouble. K-State won here two years ago. They beat Kansas in Manhattan this year. But Kansas has won 35 of the last 37 between the two teams as Clint Stewart lays it in. And now Mario Chalmers gets called for a foul. Knocked down Dominique Sutton. Nice play by Stewart there. Good efficiency, good execution offensively. Time now for tonight's Sonic rivalry recap. And again, it's been a very one-sided recap. 35 of the last 37 have gone to Kansas. But earlier this year, K State, they talked the talk and then they went out and walked the walk and they beat the Jayhawks in Manhattan. Well, it was Manhattan maybe after that game. People celebrating like you couldn't believe. Hey, you show you how good those two guys are on the sideline. Against Baylor, they get beat 92 86. Beasley gets 44. Walker 31. 75 of the 86 points. Wow. And still lost by six. A frustrated Michael Beasley sitting down with two. Bill Walker's got two. Take another look at the foul call. 
Frank Martin was trying to say it was Anderson not Walker and I think coach Martin is right it looked like Anderson was backing into Sasha Khan I think he definitely had an argument right there the officials aren't really sure use the monitor Roderick Stewart Brandon Rush him to shoot that open shot. And that's all established by having good inside presence good Arthur. It gives you good spacing. Rush a better than 40% career shooter from beyond the arc. Now the reach and foul, I believe, is on Russell Robinson. A couple of threes already denied for Brandon Rush. Big Monday presented by Bud Light on ESPN. Begins in the Big East at 7 Eastern. The Backyard Brawl, a rematch of Pitt in West Virginia. Pitt one by one earlier this season. And then Texas Tech is right here. Senior night at Kansas at 9 Eastern. How about Texas Tech beating Texas well, earlier today? You know, they're really so tough at home down in Lubbock. Very different basketball team than on the road, but that's a great win for Patrick. I think Patrick's going to be an outstanding coach. He's got fire, he's got knowledge, and he's got a guy that can help him a little bit. That guy who's going to be sitting with you yeah. in the studio? Tell me about that. Oh, I think, well, I talked to him yesterday. He's down there in spring training with Tony La Russa. I will tell you this. His insights, his knowledge, his presence, his credibility, it's a mega hire. But as I said in the paper, and I mean it, I hope he leaves some cash in a bank for me with <laughs> Disney. Anderson out. As K-State goes even deeper, Luis Colon, a 6'10 sophomore out of Puerto Rico, is into the game. Frank Martin is running through people who don't normally play this early in a game. Tough place to play guys that don't play that often to get that rhythm. This is one of the great venues in college basketball. We'll be at another one next Saturday. Congratulations to Vivian Stringer, Mike Krzyzewski, 800 wins. How about the wins for both Carolina and Duke today? Big comeback wins for Carolina and Duke. That's the game we'll have one week from tonight here on ESPN. Win number 800 for Mike Krzyzewski. Duke comes back late and beats NC State. Tyrese Rice had 46 points for Boston College. Carolina rallied. Big game for Hansborough. Huge second half for Wayne Ellington. And Alan Voskel knocked down some clutch free throws at the end for the Red Raiders. Well, I think the big news for North Carolina is they remain, they remain unblemished on the road, which is quite an achievement. It'll be number one. But the fact also is they have Ty Lawson back now. And that's a major, major plus. All right. Player of the year. Tyler Hansbrough or Michael Beasley? Well, we're going to talk about that. And I want to share that with you, my feelings about that scenario. I will tell you this, there is no doubt whatsoever that the best talent in America is Michael Beasley. Stewart being defended by Sharon Collins. Had a double dribble. They missed the double dribble. He definitely double dribbled. Now a trap on Stewart. And another forced turnover by the Jayhawks. Well, Sasha Khan has played some good hard minutes off the bench tonight for KU. They're so aggressive defensively, playing defense as a unit. And it's going to be Cologne, I believe, called for the foul for Kansas State, and that's going to put Kansas into the bonus already. Well, I'll tell you, they got it on Cologne, but he was retaliating from a hit by Khan, and he got caught. A 12-point lead for Kansas. Beasley with two fouls. Walker with two fouls. And you know, here he comes. I don't think you can waste time. I agree with Frank Martin. You're down 12, 13 on the clock. You can't wait. Yep. You can't wait. He just has to play now with a good basketball IQ and try to avoid that third foul. So Walker and Beasley, each with two fouls, both of them coming back in. I know he doesn't like to utilize the zone. I think the thing that really amazed me in preparing for the game, Beasley in the last two games had big games scoring-wise. Yep. But in the last 16 minutes, the in the line, game prior, he didn't get a field goal down in the last 16 minutes. There are, then, yeah, there are times he's just covered by so many people, they can't get they him the ball. Can't get him the ball. Some of his best offense comes off the offensive glass. In the last game against Texas, 13 minutes, he didn't get a goal in the last 13 minutes. Beasley and Arthur, as Aaron said, a former teammates on Team USA, the under-19 team, having a joke. Beasley's really kind of a big kid. You wouldn't know it from his facial expression, but he's a practical joker. He loves right. SpongeBob SquarePants. He wants to be a kid. You know what? I don't think he meant anything by that quote. It wasn't trying to be arrogant. He was just having some fun, and it was played up so big. But you know what? That's great for TV. <laughs> That's great for TV. 
14 point lead for Kansas. Can the return of Beasley and Walker spark the Wildcats? Oh, get him one on one. Get him the ball inside. And he is bumped by Khan. He is so quick with the ball. What a treat it's been in the Big 12 for them to have Kevin Durant one year and now Michael Beasley. I mean, two really quality players, quality people, really great to be around. Teammates really respond and like them. Well, look at these numbers. There's a freshman third in the country in scoring, first in rebounding. Unbelievable. He'll be the third guy, freshman in the lead the nation in rebounding. Joining Kenny Miller of Loyola, Chicago, back in the mid-80s. And Paul Millsap of Louisiana. Beasley misses the front end, but it's dribbled out of bounds back to K-State. Beasley has had three 40-point games in his first game, his debut, 32 points, 24 oh. rebounds. He's had 11 games with 30 or more. Bob Boozer had the record with 10, who was a great, great player way before your time. Young asking for a screen from Beasley, who is not a selfish player, does not need a whole lot of touches to get the huge numbers that he gets. Looking inside for Walker. Trying to work on the mismatch there with the Robinson. It stays with the Wildcats. See, Walker saying, I got fouled, I got fouled. He's just got to play basketball. Concentrate on playing hoops. Walker, a redshirt freshman, suffered a torn ACL a year ago, got the year back. It's not the time to lose, Dan. You lose four in a row on a row, four in your last five, lose your last three. If they lose here, lose to Iowa State. They're in trouble for the NCAA berth. Walker misses the three. Anderson keeps it alive. K-State has it back only momentarily as Young steps out of bounds. Frank Martin at least liked the effort. They're battling. Not that loss early in the year could come to haunt him as well. The loss to George Mason. They don't have a lot of quality wins when you look at their wins. Their Frank best win outside the conference probably against Cal. Their best win inside the conference, of course, is the win over Kansas. Well, Cal certainly not having a great year down in the back 10, which is a tough, tough conference. Stanford, what a job they're doing down there. Trent Johnson. Big 12 is going to be an interesting league come Selection Sunday with teams like A&M, Oklahoma. He went zone. to the zone. Yep. Yeah, he went to the zone. I think it's a smart decision. A block by Beasley. Kansas State will play some 3-2 zone. And with the foul trouble, they may play a lot of it here tonight as Beasley and Cole Aldrich get tied up, taking us to a timeout. Well, Beasley's fouls a big story early, but Dick, just as big a story, how well Kansas has played. Brandon Rush is on fire. Yeah, he really is. He can shoot the ball. That's why it's a real danger to zone them, but I don't think they have any choice. Number six, Jerry West. Jerry West was the quintessential symbol of all-around play and is West Virginia's all-time leader in both scoring and rebounding. His 30 double-doubles in 1960 is an NCAA single-season record. IBM, getting it done. The logo, Jerry West, wow. number six on the all-time list. We'll count down the top 25 every night of college basketball. We'll announce the number one player of all time next Saturday during the Carolina Duke game, one a week from tonight. So let's check out wow. 10 through 6. You know, Digger said to me, if he had these five guys, he would have messed them up. <laughs> he would have messed them up. He couldn't win with those five. Trust me. Now, he would have found the way to lose. Now, Will Chamberlain, of course, played his college basketball here at Kansas. Now, let me ask you this. Wilt's an obvious guy to be on the list. Wow. We haven't seen Danny Manning yet. I can't is he, believe is it. he in the top five? Oh, uh, Or is he not in the top 25? Well, I would doubt if he's in the top five, but I'll tell you this. I thought he should have been in the top 25 when you're talking about college. I mean, he was an incredible player. Carried his club to the national title. Danny in the... Miracle kids for Larry Brown. Chalmers the miss. Arthur misses on the follow. And back comes K State. If you're just joining us, Michael Beasley, two fouls. Bill Walker, two fouls. Each sat down. The game was getting away from the Wildcats, and Frank Martin put both of them back in. Blake Young fouled by Aldrich. Nice drive by Young. Good perimeter defensive player, good athlete. Aaron, I'll tell you one thing, they got to find a way to score quickly. Well, they're going to try. I was just listening in on Kansas State's huddle. Frank Martin a little bit more composed with Beasley and Walker now in the lineup, guys. But I do have to tell you something he stressed to us today. Obviously, this is such a young team. Nine first-year guys on this team, and a lot of them mentioned.
attention to us earlier and Return even during warm-ups. This is the loudest building they had ever been in, and that was during warm-ups, guys. Blake Young, their senior on Kansas State, tried to pull a lot of the young guys over to him and say, don't let this crowd get to you. Block it out. This is the loudest I have ever heard this place. I don't know how you block this out. Some of the players, when they came out here, and they spent a lot of time looking into the student section yeah. during warm-ups, uh, looking at the fans. Some seemed amused by it. Others seemed a little bit unsettled by it. One player came out with an iPod in, maybe trying to, to get away from the noise of the building. 14-5, the score was with Beasley on the sideline. Rush with a couple of threes already tonight. Aldrich, the freshman, not getting a lot of minutes, but they've got some high hopes for him. He's just stuck behind some upperclassmen right now. Sharon oh, Collins knocks it down. Oh, and a steal oh, by Robinson. Oh, sloppy, sloppy. Can't give them an easy deuce like that when you're behind. I'll tell you, zoning them is going to be tough. You can play in a few minutes, but their perimeter people can shoot. Now Frank Martin's got a real dilemma because of the foul trouble. Rock Chalk Jayhawk, this place is alive, baby. You talk about passion and spirit. Um, Offensive foul. Or was it a, just a straight turnover? Just a turnover committed there by Kansas State. Clint Stewart will come in. Jacob Pullen will go out. Things were going so great for them. They had won six in a row. They were 15 and three at one time. Yep. The loss they handed to Kansas was the Jayhawks' first loss of the season. Beasley, in part because of limited minutes, Dick, only has two points tonight, but he's hardly getting any touches down there as well. Well, the defense really matching up on him. Robinson the miss, long rebound to Collins. Totally, totally aggressive here tonight yep. has been Kansas. Now a turnover, Walker with Stewart. Tough bounce pass, and look at the speed by Darrell Arthur getting back on D. Timeout, Kansas. Yeah, great defensive transition right there. That's just pure hustle. Jayhawks are going to be one of my four teams. When I talk about Final Four, I like this Jayhawk team. I like their athletic ability. I like the fact of Arthur inside with Jackson, and I think their perimeter play can match anybody in the nation. They've got a great rotation with Robinson, Chalmers, and Rush in the backcourt, and a guy as good as Sharon Collins coming off the bench. There's Collins shooting that three. Right over the top of the defense. Now look at the steal. Oh, I put the offensive player napping. There's the pass to Rush, and Rush finishes. Midway through the first half, a 17-point lead for Kansas with Texas Dick losing earlier today. And Kansas may play Texas again in the Big 12 tournament. I mean, a number one seed is still definitely out there for the Jayhawks. Oh, absolutely. You don't know what's going to happen out there. I think that you look at Carolina now, though, looks in pretty good shape. And certainly Memphis. I think North Carolina, that Duke game next Saturday is big. It can also mean who gets the number one seed and stays right in the state of Carolina. Plays a rally. And then goes to Charlotte. You don't have to get in the plane. Number four, UCLA is at Arizona tomorrow. Tennessee was or is number one, but of course they lost this week to Vanderbilt, so they're going to drop a little bit. Number five, Texas lost today to Texas Tech. Man to man now. Robinson draws the contact. <laughs> Beasley has gone back to the bench. Along with Walker, but not for long, huh? See, I was talking about that yesterday. We're talking about the psychology of the game. When you play people, now, for example, Texas Tech comes here to play on this floor, senior night. You got a scenario where they're going to play up big to the kids, how they just beat Texas, and they're going to be so fired up like you can't believe. So much of the game is about emotion, about focusing. Well, look at what's happened. Memphis loses to Tennessee, then Tennessee loses to Vanderbilt, and now today Vanderbilt loses at Arkansas. I mean, you can, you can have the highest of highs, and then whether it's a letdown or just a, a motion, like you say, it's so unpredictable. Well, certain teams at home are certainly, like, almost invincible. Yeah. You have Vanderbilt, they're undefeated at home. They're 18 and zip on their floor. How about BYU, 45 in a row, Notre Dame in the mid-30s at home? What a job he's done, Michael Gray. A long two missed by Beasley. Kent with the offensive rebound. Now Khan brings it down. They're going to have a tough time getting a lot of looks for Beasley inside. Rush gets another look. Yes! He's got the shooter's touch. He's got the shooter's touch. My friend, this could be a long, long night if you're a Kansas State fan. 
I am not shocked. I told you before the game what I anticipated. Just watching them in the warm-up and looking at Bill Self. We knew that Frank Martin and his kids were going to have a tough task here tonight. Number three on Bill Walker, who had foul trouble against Kansas last month in Manhattan. Only played 25 minutes but scored 22 points. But he's been unable to get untracked. And you know what? Nobody's coming in. Frank Martin's going to roll the dice here. He's got to leave his two best players in the game. Beasley, the pull-up. Out of bounds to Kansas. I got a feeling Mr. Beasley's going to remember this night a long, long time. Well, it's going to be Kansas State ball. Boy, oh boy, the Jayhawks are not sure about that. Sure looked like it was going to belong to Kansas. Well, you're up 21, you don't have too much of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Bill South, five years, a lot of wins. People anticipating this year to make a strong run in the NCAA tournament. Another steal. Walker's gone to the bench now with the third foul. And a turnover. Collins a little overexcited on that transition break. He says, my bad. Eddie honored 110 years of basketball here. They said it was really emotional. Yep. They honored the 88 team. Larry Dan was in the crowd, signing autographs, had a blast. Well, there may not be a place, a town, a building, a program. There may be, but there may not be one. Anybody else with as much tradition as Kansas? Well, it starts with Naismith. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty good start. 1891, he found the game. He coached here. And you think about certainly Mr. Allen. Bog Allen coaching here as Beasley knocks it down. Adolph Beasley. Rupp played here. Dean Smith, of played course. Yep. Yes, sir. Ralph Miller played here. You think about Wilk, the Stick, Chamberlain, Hall of Fame coaches, Larry Brown, Roy Williams. The amazing job Williams did here. Arthur, no. Khan keeps it alive. Beasley, the rebound. He has amazing hands. He's a right-handed person. The only thing he does left-handed wow. is shoot the basketball. And Bill Self is concerned enough to call a timeout. Tell you, the kid is amazing. He's an offensive machine. Plays within the realm of the team concept as well. Very unselfish. A three-pointer for Michael Beasley. They're going to find him right now. Kick the ball out. Stewart finds the open shooter. Beasley. I'll tell you what, there's no doubt he'll be Uno number one in the it. NBA draft. I will be shocked if anybody else would have surpassed him. Could be reunited with his buddy Kevin Durant. You never know how it's well, going to work out. 24 double doubles, already an NCAA freshman record, which was held Carmelo uh, by Carmelo Anthony 22. five years ago. How about 44 points against Baylor a couple of weeks ago? 30 or more, 11 times high for most in the country, and three games of 40 and 10. I mean, his numbers. Are ridiculous. His numbers actually are a little bit better than Kevin Durant's numbers. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is also, when you look at the cast around him, he's got some good young players, but he doesn't have, for example, Carmelo had a key Warwick, had McNamara. They had some pretty good players. Yep. A little half court trap. Tough to trap this club to win it past the ball. Rush open again. Couple of misses after two early makes from beyond the arc for Brandon Rush. Beasley's back on the bench. And Martin trying to yo-yo him in and out and keep him with two fouls, but get as much out of him as he can between now and halftime. He could come back in. We got a media timeout coming to the next whistle. And there's a travel on Chalmers. The I big get, story here tonight, Dick, the early foul trouble for the superstar. Yes, sir, for Michael Beasley, no question. I'd get him in right now, though, with the ball offensively. Brandon Rush pumped up. He's knocked down a couple of threes. Kansas is doubling up K-State here tonight. All right, Scott, thank you. A huge win for Texas Tech and a Texas loss that has given a Kansas new life atop the Big 12 standings. They could move into a tie with the Longhorns tonight. Now, Texas beat Kansas earlier this season in their only regular season meeting, so if they finish tied, they will share the conference regular season title, but Texas would still be the number one seed. Well, the tournament's going to be right here in Kansas City. It's going to be at the New Spring Center. 
32 16 Kansas Michael Beasley back in the game as Frank Martin continues to shuttle him in and out Beasley's got two fouls Bill Walker on the bench with three after a trap and rush at the point of it long arms and they fall back into a straight zone something they don't do a whole lot of they go to a zone. you know and it's it's a box and one with Brandon Rush on a Michael Beasley yeah, they work Jason this and shoot around Knocked away by Chalmers. Brandon Rush and Roderick Stewart were the two players that Bill Self said, if we go boxing one, you're the guy. Yeah, you know, but I don't agree with that right now. They're playing so well defensively. Why change? Get them out of that rhythm. As they've come out of it. Now yeah. they've gone back to man to man. Smart. Smart decision. So they were in it for just about 15 seconds. Gilbert driving the baseline out of control. Kent, just before the shot clock, misses it and Arthur another rebound. Rush looking for his shot, at times accused of not being aggressive enough offensively. Yeah, I really would say that. I think he's a little bit put, put too much unselfish. Kent gets the roll, and the Wildcats nice creeping game. back into it, Dick. Nice play by Kent inside. He's got three-point range. He can run really well. They're going to get a stop right here. 7-0 run, K-State. Sitting in that zone. Don't make you get a little bit passive, and that's what's happening right now. Chalmers uses the screen and misses the shot. Khan looked like he was going to slam it home, but he missed the follow. See, right now, Beastie's got to find a way to get free. He's got to find a way to get free. Driving on Rush, and it's a block. Attacking the basket. His worst game this year was against Xavier against Sean Miller's club. Had five points in that game. Struggle against Ryder. Ryder had 13 in that game, but he's had such monster games. 44 and 17 against Baylor. 40 and 17 against Missouri. 40 and 15 against Winston Salem. Foul on Durrell Arthur, his second of Beasley to the line. 42 points per game between Beasley and Walker, but the foul trouble has limited them tonight. Did you hear the story about the Xavier game? One of the reasons why Beasley may have struggled forgot his shoes he forgot his shoes didn't pack oh, his, shoes. his shoes they go to Cincinnati fortunately for them a couple of the members of this staff were on Bob Huggins staff at Cincinnati and they found a pair of 17s to go <laughs> but now they pack an extra pair just in case he forgets his psychologically up in the office that I built self these coaches are wacky man he made me switch seats with you because right. every time I sat on the right they would win he didn't make me sit on the left look at him right there after the best he can't believe it Beasley back to the bench. I tell you what, they get this under 10, they would be on cloud nine to go in at halftime. Rush puts it on the floor this time and is fouled by Sutton. First on Sutton. He's an explosive athlete. Gained eligibility a little bit later, second semester. Take a look at the field goal percentage. It's just right there, Kansas sharing the basketball. Kansas among the top teams in the nation in scoring, assists. Two free throws for Rush, double bonus time as he knocks it down. And here comes Beasley right back into the game. He said, I like this. I play offense, let other guys play defense. Let's go to Aaron Andrews. Daniel, you're mentioning all the things Kansas does well, but the one thing Bill Self was really frustrated with in the month of February, particularly after they lost to Kansas State, was the lack of energy, the fact that they weren't focused. Some suggested to Bill Self maybe they were like last year's Florida team, just waiting to kick it in until March when the tournament came around. Bill Self said that's comparing apples to oranges. You have no reason to feel that way or play that way. Florida had won a championship. We haven't done that yet. I knew she had a bunch of Florida. <laughs> how to get into the conversation. <laughs> Gilbert from the corner. A little strong on the three. Beasley to save. Kansas ball. People say, what's wrong with the Jayhawks? Some of their fans, because they lost three games. I mean, it's amazing. If you're North Carolina, Duke, or Kansas, even UCLA, you lose a game, it becomes a major, major story. 25 and 3, ranked seventh in the country. They were 20 and 0 when K State beat them. So people, other people get players too, Dan. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The other guys are trying also. Beasley goes right back out, coming in when there's a whistle leading into an offensive possession, and then sitting down when there's a whistle leading to a defensive possession. Huh, picks it right back out. A lot better effort defensively right now by Kansas State than early in the game. Huh, offense, last and good. That's his go-to move. 
A little back problem off the lifted weights, but he felt really good against Iowa State. That was effective in a short time he played. Was starting earlier this year. Darnell Jackson's taken over, but Khan still giving them valuable minutes off the bench. Well, as you said earlier, Darnell Jackson's been a real positive player this year. Foul's called by Buck Stewart. His first personal foul, 10th team foul. Big Monday presented by Bud Light on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern. A great women's action. Number four, Rutgers, and number one, UConn. Of course, ESPN is your exclusive home for the women's NCAA championship. This is a rematch of a game earlier this year when Epiphany Prince scored 27 second-half points in a two-point Rutgers win over Connecticut. Well, congratulations, certainly to Vivian Stringer. She won her 800th game by a more sub-type of dandy down here in Connecticut. She's incredible. What a talent she is. And Prince certainly can flat-out play as well. Then Stewart at the line for K-State, the young man who lost his mother to breast cancer several weeks ago, missed a couple of games. The whole team has rallied around him. Clint was wearing a pink T-shirt signifying breast cancer awareness in the pregame warm-up. She was at the game on Notre Dame when we did the Jimmy V Classic. She was sitting behind the bench. Gone inside with a jump hook again. It hangs on the rim for a moment. It's basket interference, says Rick Hartzell. So it's K-State ball. Take a look down the low post. There's the little jump hook. Still in the cylinder when touched by the Kansas player. Now here comes Beasley back into the game. K-State's got the ball. So Anderson goes out. His dad, Anderson, a 10-year NBA player. Beasley getting booed every time he comes back on the court. Well, you know, tough to get any kind of rhythm, but as you said earlier, he's getting booed because obviously he's a talent. Yep. They don't boo nobody. They don't boo said, nobody. Reggie said that. Playing that zone right now. Stewart, the guy out on Beasley. Are they going to make sure they follow him everywhere he goes? Lynn Stewart, no relation to Roderick Stewart, gets the bounce, and Kansas State hanging in. He's a veteran player, a guy that really understands how to play Stewart. Todd got a little quiet here. It did. Wildcats have taken some of the life out of this building with this comeback. Defense by Gilbert to stay in front of Rush. Now the lob inside for Khan. Good, strong finish by Sasha Khan. The really established the interior game. Going inside early to Arthur. Now to Khan. Post defense not available. Some foul trouble for the other big guys for Kansas, and Khan has been huge off the KU bench. But in this piece, they had him wide open. You got to know what to recognize to get the ball to the great player. Jaron Collins. And the rebound to Gilbert. Nice one. Nice nice. Now they get him inside. Beasley surrounded and scores anyway. He used the right hand right there. Ambidextrous. He can use either hand. What a talent. He's going to be a special player at the next level. No doubt this kid will be a star of stars. Michael Beasley, despite some foul trouble, starting to get his in Kansas State, hanging around, trying to creep back into it with the Jayhawks. Well, here's how badly students wanted to get into this game. Hundreds, if not a couple of thousand of them, lined up for hours today to try to get first come, first serve seats in the student section, and here they are rushing in just under one of the baskets, keeping themselves entertained before the game, waiting for game time. Made a little bit of a mess. Wow. Typical kids. Huh? Yeah, look at this here. Unbelievable. Hey, where's my roses? I want my roses they gave me before the game. The cheerleaders. That was very nice. Aaron was got that some nice? as well. Wow. 13 point lead for Kansas over K State. I asked you before, and you, oh. you you made us wait a little bit. Michael Beasley or Tyler Hansbro, who's the player of the year? Well, you know, you're going to put me on the spot. It's a political campaign right now. I will tell you this Michael Beasley is purely the best talent in America. In the middle of the season, when they were 15 and 3, I would have voted for Mr. Beasley. But casting my ballot now for the Naismith and the Wooden and the AP, I would have to cast it for Tyler Hansbrough for this reason. He carried that club. That club was struggling when they lost Ty Lawson, yet he responded in every big moment. They're going to be number one in the nation, and my answer is very simple. To the victor goes the spoils. How much fun would it be if those two teams happen to meet one another in the NCAA tournament to see Hansbrough and Beasley go against one? Well, I'll tell you one thing. they got a lot of work to do before yep. they think about the year.
NCAA tournament. They got to win some basketball games. They've lost three in a row. Kansas State has, and they're down by 12 here at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. I know one thing, though, is that Beasley's going to win the race to the bank. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah, number one has its privileges, doesn't it? It's going to break the bank. And it is K-State ball as Aldrich could not handle that bullet pass from Mario Chalmers. You know, Frank Martin with all his ties down in Florida, coached at Miami <laughs> Senior High School. He went to Florida International. They got five players on their teams from the state of Florida. Dick Beasley just came back in. Frank Martin's been shuttling him in, in and out on every whistle, depending on whether or not they have the basketball. He's really done a good job yep. for a guy that's in his first year in handling this situation. Not very easy, but I really commend him the way he's handle it Beasley here in this scenario. An assistant under Bob Huggins, uh, both at Cincinnati and here last year as Beasley misses a good look and he's upset with himself. You know, Bob Huggins early in the year at West Virginia, they teased a lot of people, but now reality setting in that tough, tough Big East. They lost to UConn today. Don't forget West Virginia and Pitt. Big Monday, 7 Eastern here on ESPN. You know, Pitt had that good win today coming back from 11 down against Syracuse. A pressure for the Orange. All kinds of wild action around the college basketball landscape. You'll hear all about it at halftime. Aldrich, strong move. Beasley the rebound and fouled from behind. I'll tell you one thing, they can get this under 10. Number two on Aldrich coming up with the UPS halftime report. Reese Davis, Hubert Davis, Digger Phelps, Jay Billis will look at some of the great games in college basketball. Mike Krzyzewski wins number 800. A big comeback win for Duke over NC State. Carolina over Boston College and some crazy finishes in the Big East. They got their game faces on already. Oh, yeah, Reese is ready to go. That's the captain of the ship. I think it's amazing they're only down 11. Kansas came out on fire defensively, aggressively, forced turnovers, got two quick fouls on Beasley and on Walker. You know what Digger's thinking about right now? Because he told me earlier today, it was on this floor, in this building, 1978, Notre Dame beats DePaul to go to the Final Four. Wow. Kelly Trapuca and company. That was the year in 78 when Kentucky won it all. Mm -hmm. They got it down to 10, Dick. How about this? Beasley's gone back out because Kansas has the ball. Doing a much better job defensively. The zone really has been effective. You would think it would be effective against the way they can handle and shoot, but the zone really has slowed down the speed and quickness of Kansas. Collins for three. Con with another rebound. Chalmers for three. And Collins... Oh, it looked like he took it away from Clint Stewart, but it's ruled a held ball, and the arrow gives it to K-State. I thought it was a quick whistle. I thought it was a quick, quick whistle. Let me ask you, do you agree with my agree assessment with of Hansbrough and oh, Mr. Beasley? Yes. I, th oh, I think Hansbrough's the player of the year, but I agree with you about the bank account, too. Oh, there's no question. <laughs> you know, the bank account's yeah. going to be there. Take a look right here. I thought it was a quick whistle. I was a strip. He stripped them in a basketball. So a, a big turning point. It gives K-State the ball back. It allows Frank Martin to get Beasley back into the game, and now they can get it into single digits. Which would be a victory, really, for them if that happens. Air ball on the three. He shot that with a man in his face. Never really was able to get his balance in shooting the ball. Foul on Clint Stewart of K-State. Tell you, it would be frustrating and really be a, a tough blow for all the fans in America, too, if, for example, Kansas State doesn't get to the NCAA. Last time they were in the tournament, and the NCAA was 1996. They were coached by a really good guy, Tom Asbury. Yeah, I'm so happy he just was named coach again at Pepperdine, where he had lots of success. And you think about some of the coaches. Kansas State has a rich tradition. If you go back a ways, four Final Fours. Uh, Tex Winter was a coach. Cotton Fitzsimmons was a Pretty coach. Pretty good guys. What classy guys. You took them a Hall of Fame guys when you took Tex and Cotton. And you think about some of the great players. I mean, I mentioned Boozer, but what about Orlando Blackman, Mitch Richmond? Rush on the drive this time, cut off by Kent. Con. Great rebound by Roderick Stewart, and he kicks it back out. There's no doubt their priority's been to get that ball into the interior. Rush 
Fading off to his right, missed the shot, Beasley's got it. Final minute of the first half. Shot selection so important right here. You want to go in with a little momentum on your side. You want to have psychologically where a coach can look at you and say, we're back to this game, we're back to this game. Given the foul trouble for Walker and Beasley, Frank Martin's got to be pleased to be down 11. That's where you want to go. That's where you want to go. And Beasley is fouled by Khan. You got to go to the man on the interior. Beasley a little shaken up. I'm all right, he says. Big Monday presented by Bud Light is here on ESPN. 7 Eastern, Pitt in West Virginia. What a rivalry that is in the Big East. And then Texas Tech, fresh off a win over Texas, will be here in Lawrence for senior night at Allen Fieldhouse as Beasley, who's a really good free throw shooter. Close. 25 out of his last 26 coming into this game tonight, misses another one. That's a third he's missed tonight. Yep, four of seven. And he's hearing that air ball chant loud and clear. That's respect. When he's hearing that, that's respect. See, you don't know much about Aretha Franklin. I'm going to see Smokey Robinson. I'm seeing him Sunday night. Do you know who Smokey is? Yes. Yeah, he's going to be done at Van Wiesel down in Sarasota. You know what? In my next life, can I come back as you? <laughs> you got it pretty good. Kansas has had it pretty good here in the first half, but a lead that was once 21 is down to 10 as they can hold for the last shot. Man-to-man -man defense came out of the zone. Another good call. And I'll tell you, way back to the safety of the bench. Yeah, Frank Martin doing a solid job tactically on that sideline. Collins. Nice play. Great one I love move by Collins there. Somebody put a hand up. Kansas needed that basket to get back a little lift. But Kansas State's in the game. He's only got two fouls now. He can really assert himself in the second half. Aaron Andrews standing by with Frank Martin. Dan, thanks. Coach, team obviously suffering with some foul trouble there in the first half. But how did you manage to get back into the game? Well, we just had to stay the course. Kansas is a heck of a team. They're going to come out, protect their whole court. And we understood that we just got to relax and keep playing. Now that you're going to tell them that in the second half, what's the game plan for the second? Well, that we're fine. We're right where we need to be. We've managed the game our right way. Now we just got to come out the second and have keep attacking the interior on offense. Coach, thank you. Thank you. If they can keep Beasley and Walker on the floor, it would be a huge boost for the Wildcats upset bid. They're down by 12 and a half. The UPS halftime reports coming up with Reese and the guys. PN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Jockey. Visit us online at jockey.com and the first ever G8 from Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. ESPN Saturday Night Primetime, presented by DirecTV, all part of Judgment Week, presented by Jockey. Kansas by a dozen. Foul trouble for Bill Walker to Michael Beasley curtailed their minutes. Can the Wildcats get back in this game? Well, I think the next four minutes are going to be vital. They have to really come out with a little spurt. Walker only played eight minutes. He was one for three. I mean, look at Beasley's numbers. 14 points, six rebounds, and 12 minutes of action. And he never could really get in the rhythm because he was being yo-yoed, you know, offense, defense coming out of the game. Here's tonight's TGI Friday's game track. Not good shooting numbers for either team. Turnovers killed K-State. 14 of them in wow. Kansas, as good as any team in America at turning turnovers into points. Let's check in with Aaron Andrews. Dan, I had a chance to speak with Bill South coming out of the locker room, and he told me he felt like his team got some good shots in the last 10 minutes, but they just didn't go in. He urged his team to be confident when playing against his Kansas but he said we're going to try to get him in more foul trouble. Put a body on him and try to frustrate him. I'll tell you one thing, Aaron, there were two different clubs in the first 10 minutes and the second 10 minutes. Well, Darnell Jackson just made quite a statement to open up the second half. Offensive rebounding has been a huge story tonight as Gilbert misses a three. There have been more offensive rebounds in this game than defensive rebounds. I'll tell you, danger time, I think, these four minutes for Kansas State. They got to avoid a spurt by Kansas. Jackson came out in a statement, as you said, Dan, really got up on the offensive glass. Gonna watch right here. There's the little jump shot. Now, Mr. Jackson, there he is. What a great offensive rebound. 
Six eight, about 250. His numbers way up from a year ago, having a terrific senior season. Rush on the drive, almost lost it. Chalmers, Robinson. Rush with the mid-range jumper, it's short. Rebound, Beasley. I think Rush should go to the basket a little bit more. He had a lane, he could have went right to the goal. Clint Stewart pulls up, misses the three, and it is out of bounds to Kansas. You know, early in the first half here, second half rather, you gotta find Mr. Beasley. Yeah. You gotta find him. I mean, he got the wrong people shooting the basketball. There are times in their games when he gets the ball a ton. There are times when the guards have trouble getting him the ball because he's surrounded and he's got to come outside to get the ball. See, that was the difference with Carmelo Anthony and that Syracuse team. He was surrounded by a real strong cast. Offensive rebound rush. He's going to get a look from the corner. He deserved it. After getting that offensive rebound, he deserved it. He's got a velvet touch. Good timeout by Frank Martin. He's that T.O. Again, we're seeing a Kansas team a little bit more fired up than we saw in the second 10 minutes of the first half. 16 for Rush. Kansas up 17. PN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Jockey. Visit us online at jockey.com. And Sonic. It's not just good. It's Sonic good. This ESPN telecast is available in unparalleled high definition on ESPN HD presented by Olivia. Welcome back to Allen Fieldhouse. If you're a college basketball fan and you're one of those people who says, you know, there are some places I'd really love to visit. This one has got to be on the list, a special place to see a game. I mean, how lucky are we? We're on a Saturday here, and next Saturday we're at Cameron for North Carolina and Duke. And we get paid. <laughs> I mean, don't tell our bosses we get paid. And that Tennessee-Memphis game wasn't wow. all that bad last week either. Well, you talked about it. Danger time early in it the really second is. Half, They're out of sync offensively. Chalmers all the way. The final goes. <laughs> Beating him on the offensive boards. Beating him on the offensive glass means you're being a little bit more aggressive. Darnell Jackson, I believe, getting up there for the putback. This Kansas team really has some great spurts. As Clark Kellogg would say, spurtability. Bill Walker. Boy, they got to get him on track. He's a guy two games ago, 31 against and Baylor. And then he's 0 for 14. Yeah. You can't have a Bill Walker go 0 for 14 and have a chance to win. He's too talented. He came in the year before Beasley with almost as much hype as Beasley came in with. Darrell Arthur. Because you're beating him on the glass. This could be a blowout. This could be a blowout if they don't step it up a little bit more. This Kansas team came out, made adjustments. Halftime came back out, focused defensively. Remember the Jayhawks lost to the Wildcats just over a month ago. Kansas seeking revenge here tonight. Beasley, no. Young with a save. Good play by Blake Young. Now the ball is out of bounds. Into uh, the media row just to our left, wow. and Young is down and shaken up after that save. Young made a great effort in going after the loose ball. Young's a senior, a junior college player, a big scorer as a JC player, but has adapted and become a defensive energy kind of guy for the Wildcats. Ooh. Looked like he rolled both ankles, the right one and the left one. Tough to tell exactly what it is as he gets help to his feet. You know, earlier in the show, you were mentioning the great coaches, Cotton Fitzsimmons, Jack Hartman, and Tex Winter, Jack Gardner coached there. And what about our buddy Lon Kruger, who did a phenomenal job. Great player at Kansas State, now doing a heck of a job at UNLV. Young getting helped off the court. Looks like he's favoring the right foot or right leg. Dominic Sutton in, in his place, and Young is going to go right into the locker room. See the defensive effort. Look at the pressure on the basketball. You want to beat him to the spot. DBT. You drive him, you beat him, and you turn him. And then you get help. I mean, they're in a defensive stance. They're aggressive. And most of all, they're playing it as a unit. They're giving help to one another there. That's the important part of the defense. Beasley misses the jumper. Almost not an easy shot. Defense pressured him. He's having to work for his here tonight. Rush. along the baseline and a block by Beasley. 
Try to be too spectacular. Numbers for K-State. And great anticipation by Russell Robinson, deflecting it out of bounds. You know, you look at the perimeter players when you think of Robinson and Chalmers and Collins, factor in also Rush. There's not a deeper perimeter game in America. And up front, kind of a three-man rotation to the two big spots with Darrell Arthur, Darnell Jackson, and Sasha Khan. They've got all the ingredients. Knocked away by Jackson. Another K-State turnover and a foul on Kent. They're totally out of rhythm, and that's all created by the defensive intensity and the rotation and the aggressive play by Kansas. Well, you want some intensity. Tune into ESPN a Monday night. Big Monday presented by Bud Light, Pitt, and West Virginia. I mean, you talk about arrivals. Pitt beat West Virginia by one earlier this season at 9 o'clock. Kansas here, senior night here at Allen Fieldhouse taking on Texas Tech. Well, you know, Bob Huggins certainly broke their hearts as the lob over the top. Frustration City, you can see it in the eyes of Frank Bowen. But Bob Huggins got the call to go back home, just like Roy Williams. They were upset he left to go to Carolina. Carolina is home. It's home. He did a great job while he was here for 10 years. He's lead for three. I said 10 years. He's here more than 10 14, years. 14, I think. 14 yep. again. He's here for a long time. Robinson is fouled by pulling. Timeout on the floor. The lead is 20. A frustrating night for Beasley. Kansas right now just getting anything it wants in the offensive end. Well, it all created off the defense, though. They're doing a great job defensively, playing aggressive offensively. Darnell Jackson flying high tonight. The Jayhawks are up 20. Sports Center 30 and 30 update. Great finish on the women's side. UConn to Paul. Keisha Swanye taking it coast to coast. And with 1.6 on the clock, the game winning bucket. By the way, UConn and Rutgers for the Big East title Monday, 7 Eastern, ESPN 2. And coming off a 44 point loss to Texas AM, Texas Tech comes back and knocks off number five Texas by three. Sports Center after the game. Stay current with ESPN News. Dan. And Scott, that loss by Texas means with a win tonight here that Kansas would move into a first place tie atop the Big 12 with the Longhorns. You know, I mentioned Roy Williams. Ten years he served as an assistant down there at North Carolina under Dean Smith before Bob Frederick who did a great job and giving him the opportunity to be the coach here in 14 years here. I mean, he put on numbers that were incredible. Jacob Pullen, the freshman, knocks down the three. Kansas led by 21 in the first half. K-State got it down to 10. Kansas Kansas got it out to 23 here in the second half, and Jackson right now is just a monster inside. Well, they're scoring at will on the interior. Pullen had a big game in the first matchup when they beat him at 20 in that game. It'll stay at this end of the floor. Sasha Khan, who was a, a big contributor off the bench in the first half, will come back in for Jackson. Let's check in with Aaron Andrews. Dan, obviously you see Blake Young coming back in for Kansas State. But I want back in, so obviously Frank Martin putting him in. You know, Martin was very vocal in that huddle, but it was this guy, Michael Beasley, that got all over his teammates. He said, lock out and get the rebound. A little more colorful than what I'm allowed to say on television, but he got his point across, Dan. I'll tell you one thing, Aaron, he should have said one other statement. Get me the rock. Get me the ball. Arthur gets the rock and banks it in. I think Arthur and Jackson really establishing the inside game. Arthur with eight now, or ten, excuse me. Beasley, by the way, who's really had to work for it, has had foul trouble. He's got 19 points in this game. He's going to have big numbers in a very quiet way. I think the writers go before the game, Tom Keegan, Jason Whitlock, the Lord basically said, Kansas has got to go to their interior people. See these writers, they know the game. Yep. They know the game. Kansas is a lot better basketball team when they establish inside and then go out. And a very balanced team where a lot of different people can lead them. Kansas State has got to get Bill Walker going. He's on the bench right now. He's been a non-factor tonight, in part because of foul trouble. You know, all year he's been one two in the conference and scoring right behind Beasley. Shot clock at six. And a block by Russell Robinson. A great defensive set by Kansas. I tell you, Robinson plays on a defensive end from out of New York City. And his backcourt partner, Mario Chalmers, pretty tough back there defensively as well. 
I tell you, Kansas State is putting themselves in a position now where they are going to really be on a bubble. And I mean, fight, fight. There's a look at Beasley. Look at him. He's taking over. He is in that huddle. Come on now. Play. Play, baby. Play. And he is generally not the vocal leader of this team. Bill Walker is by far the most talkative guy on the team. I'll tell you what, he can back up the two. There's no question. Trying to get him a little one-on-one -on -one maneuver here. A block by Khan. The defensive rotation by Khan. Beasley gets it back. Misses the eight-footer. And it is off Arthur out of bounds. Back to the Wildcats, a frustrated Michael Beasley. I'll tell you one thing about him. He's unselfish. He wants to win. He was so cordial with me before the game and talking to him. Just a terrific young guy. His mom and his whole family, Dick, have moved here, as you know, to Manhattan. They're living with him for the year. Who knows where the whole family will be next year. It's not expected that Michael Beasley will come back for another year of college. It's expected to be the number one pick in the draft. He'll live anywhere he wants. A guy, though, who has said, as the follow is good, Blake Young. A guy who has said, you know what, he likes being a kid. He's got a messy room. He doesn't, you know, he's just a normal kid who happens to play basketball. But there are going to be so many opportunities for him. I don't know about Brandon Rush. Rush. Tip it by Rush. Yeah. He's not normal, man. I'll tell you one <laughs> thing. He's so unique and so talented. Big night for Brandon Rush. Brandon's really been a lot more aggressive tonight. Beasley hands it off and the bucket for Young. Nice pass by Michael Beasley. He's so liked by his teammates. The same with Kevin Durant. You know, I must have jinxed. I must have jinxed Rick Barnes. I did a whole thing about how Barnes should be the national coach of the year, not just the, in the Big 12, and they go out and get beat today. Lost to Texas Tech earlier today. Big emotional win for Pat Knight down in Lubbock. Great win for Pat Knight. He's going to establish himself. A young competitor. Hey, I'll tell you this, got good news tonight. Bill Self is coming to our event on May 16th. In honor of Bob Knight. Tom Cavisto in the house. Bar people don't know Tom. He played as an academic all American here at Kansas. A terrific young guy, now a successful businessman. Played on the 74 team and went to the final right. four. Lost to Marquette in the semifinals, an academic all American and a big contributor to the, the Jimmy V. Yeah, he's become a big sponsor. Great opportunity for people to get a chance to rub shoulders, get pictures, and be with all the great coaches. Rush again. Misses the three from the corner. Rebound Anderson. I'm going to tell you later, some of the people coming. And they're looking for Beasley every time down the floor this time, and he's going to the line. The right foul's on Darrell Arthur. Gives me a chance to follow up on that point. You know who's coming? Roy Williams, Hall of Famer, John Calipari, Tom Izzo, Billy Donovan, Mike Bray, Jay Wright, Eddie Sutton, Bill Sutton, wow. and John Gruden. He used to be the ball boy for Bob Knight. A lot of people didn't know this. On their team that won the national championship in 76. John's coming as well. His wife Cindy was a cheerleader at Tennessee. She's coming. That's honoring Pat Summit as well. Third foul on Arthur. Beasley at the Line. Anybody wants tickets, just go to my website, pickmytowonline.com. We're going to sell it out big time to Ritz Carlton, Sarasota, Florida, for the V Foundation on and helping kids battle cancer. Beasley knocks him down, and now we'll head to the bench, probably briefly, again, 10 seconds away from a media timeout. Only got it down to 14. Kansas came out with that big spurt. The second half was 12 at halftime. They go through a little spurt, Kansas. They go on an unbelievable spurt, really pumped up defensively. Collins with a floater. He can really drive. He's had some injuries. Next year, he'll get a lot more playing time. Robinson is a senior. Who knows if Rush will be back for Collins. He's going to be a force on this team next year. Came out of Chicago. Another one of those kids that got away from Illinois. For three. Wow, he can shoot the three. I told you that earlier in the half. I said in the first half, he's capable of stepping out and making that three. And Kansas State making a little run, getting back within 13. They had it down into single digits briefly late in the first half. Kansas got it up to 23 this half. Now it's 13. We're going to do a better job defensively back in that zone. The zone sort of slowed up Kansas in the first half. 
made them stay a little bit more, became a little bit more stationary. Rush, a good look for Chalmers. Got it. They can shoot the ball from the perimeter. Normally a zone would not be effective against a team like Kansas. One, they pass the ball well. Two, they can shoot the ball. Chalmers, the best three-point percentage on the team, 46%. Crowd standing up. Yes, Sayers in the house. The Kansas Comet, one of the greatest football players of all time. Well, back in the summer, it was Michael Beasley doing the talking, saying we're going to beat Kansas wherever we play them. And they backed it up with a win over the Jayhawks January the 30th at the Bramlage Coliseum in Manhattan. Tonight, though, it's Darnell Jackson and the Jayhawks doing the talking. Get pumped up for a Carolina wow. Duke game. That was that was one of the more memorable ones that you've been a part oh, of. Oh, that was incredible. My head began to bleed in that when I stood up and I banged That's my right. head up on the top. My That's Patrick right. couldn't believe it, but I played hurt. That was a terrific game. Jeff Capel was unbelievable in that game. Take and by the shot. way, I say Oklahoma in the tournament. Agreed. They've earned the right to be in. He's doing a great job, the young coach at Oklahoma. Lopsided win over a and today. That Carolina Duke game one week from tonight, right here on ESPN 9 Eastern from Cameron. There's Kansas right now in the zone. Play will rush up on top. It's not a box of one. It's a straight 3-2. Pull it. Beasley misses the follow. Jay Hawks got numbers. And they turn it over. Yeah, he lost the handle. They missed a chance. Beasley was out ahead of the crowd. Pulled to get it to him, and they turn it over. You know, I talk about Oklahoma's in. We got a big game coming up when Baylor plays Texas A&M. I think the winner of that game will be in, and the other club's totally on the bubble. A&M looked like a lock after winning the preseason NIT. They were rolling, but they have really not played well, certainly in February. What a story it would be for Baylor to make the NCAA tournament. I think Curtis Jarrells could play. The midway point of the second half, Kansas with a 16-point lead, trying to avenge an earlier defeat this year to Kansas State as Sharon Collins is fouled. You talked about the Kansas Comet. I mean, oh, he's phenomenal. You, you want to talk about royalty. You want to talk about Hall of Famers. You want to talk about superstars. Icons, oh, legends. Gail Sayers, and I'm a Packers Class. fan, but Gail Sayers was <laughs> as good as oh it got. You can't do a job Absolutely. better than Gail Sayers did it. Played at Kansas, had to be proud of his alma mater. This Sure, football, what a job they did. But incredible. There's a look at Gail. I think about Gail Sayers, and also another name comes to my mind as you look right here football and basketball polls. The name of Walter Pate. Right. Lost his life so early. Another Chicago Bears superstar. You watch those old NFL films and you see Gail Sayers break a couple of tackles and then I mean he's a blur. He's, he's, he's a blur. He's it's, a blur. It's like everybody else in the on the field is in slow motion. He looks like a snooker run. Kent has hit one. Not this time with an air ball. Beasley's there to slam it. Wait a minute, he said it was an assist, yeah. baby. <laughs> Michael was right there with those long arms, great hands, athletic, physical. Beasley with 21 and 9. You can debate all you want. Durant or Beasley, doesn't matter. Both are great. Just like Willie Mays and Mickey Mantle growing up as a kid. Foul out on the perimeter on Dominique Sutton. My buddies like Mickey. I like Mickey. But I gave the edge to the say, hey, kid, Willie. Even as a Yankee fan growing up. Well, you know, Willie Mays didn't have the injuries. I mean, Mickey was slowed up a little bit, yep. if you could say that, with some of the injuries. But certainly both absolutely beyond superstar. And there was no steroids. No, not back there. Beasley, by the way, with 23 and 9 uh, so far. Mr. Rush says, what about my house? You coming to my house, Michael? You coming to my house? 21 for Brandon Rush. His and a steal. His brother's playing well down for the Pacers. Look at the speed by Collins. Wow! Speed, strength. Oh, Here goes oh, one of our spurts. Spurt ability is back again. And the Rock Chalk Jayhawk fans jump with joy. There's jubilation. There's celebration. There's revenge. 
They say there's no Manhattan baby in tonight, baby. Every time it looks like Kansas State is going to get back into it, the Jayhawks run away from them, and this time again with Sharon Collins. Just a better team. Yeah. They're just a better basketball team, a deeper team, more athletic. They got more bodies, more players. And you turn it over against Kansas, it's two points yes, at the other end. They generate great offense off their defense. Brandon Rush has been sensational. Gonna watch right here. Spot up. He can shoot the three. Five of nine tonight, Jake, from outside the arc. He's got great touch. Squares his body. Listen to this place. Our table is shaking. Our table is shaking. This building is shaking. I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm shaking. As Bill Self wow. told us earlier tonight, since he's been here five years, the toughest ticket, the most hype for a game since he got here. And we'll quote him accurately. He said, this place will be absolutely juiced. <laughs> and it is. And he was right. Another turnover, the 18th committed by Kansas State. Kansas gives it right, gives it right back. And then there's number 19. Darrell Arthur. Collins with a follow. They will not be denied tonight. There'll be no sweep. There'll be no brooms out sweeping. This team is showing why it's one of America's best right now. The potential is unbelievable with them. But they have to learn to be consistent away from this building. They'll play Texas Tech at home on a Monday night. That is senior night as Beasley is fouled inside. They'll finish up next weekend at Texas A&M before the Big 12 and then the NCAA tournament. The Jayhawks making a statement here tonight. Jim. Well, that's one of the reasons why I admire what Roy Williams' kids have done. They're undefeated on a road. More business. Hey, you can look shot like you wing in. Exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Direct TV. Must have equipment for any sports fan. And in part by Columbia Sportswear, maker of OmniShade, sun protected clothing so you can stay out longer. Well, the fans got to be happy when they came to town tonight. The toughest ticket in Kansas, the Jayhawks leading 71 to 49. And what a year it's been for Kansas athletics, as I'm honored to be joined by the legendary Gail Sayers. And what a year it has been, particularly with football. I know you were the honorary captain at the Orange Bowl. What was it like watching all the success for the Jayhawks on the gridiron this year? Well, when they can go 12 and one or 11 and one, it's great. But the thing about it, you know, Basketball, we're always in the top 10, top five, but we need to do the same thing in football. And the administration should put more money into the program so we can be in the top four or five every year like basketball is. What did you think of the year, though, by the Jayhawks on the football field? I mean, fantastic. It was unbelievable. No, no question about it. And they went down to the Orange Bowl, and everybody thought Virginia Tech would beat them. But they played a great, great ball game. And uh, I'm really happy for the players, for the coaches. And they got about 16 more, 16 players coming back. So it should be another good year. It should be a great year. Now, Gail, you're in town this week because of your book signing for your book, My Life in Times. What was that experience like, writing this book? Well, you know, I wrote a book, I Am Third, about 35 years ago. And it talked about my football career, uh, my high school, grade school, and pro. But this book talked about what I've been doing after football and also about how I feel about the game today and about some of the players today. And uh, I really enjoy doing it, and it's been selling very, very well. I can't thank you enough for your time. I got speechless when I met him earlier. I know we're not supposed to get starstruck. I did. That's fair enough. Man. We're talking about one of the all-timers right there, Gail Shares. Hey, Yuri, get me an autographed copy. Sure. Yeah. I mean, get me an autographed copy. Hey, Brian Sorg, remember that? Yeah. Brian Piccolo, oh, wow. what a great movie. Unbelievable, his teammate. You must have shed a tear watching Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Former Wake Forest star, joined in. James Conn played the role, I believe, of Billy D. Williams also. Kansas Comet, Gale Sayers, 23-point lead for the Jayhawks. Michael Beasley's got 25, make it 27 That's now for Michael Kansas State. Yeah, it's going to get him right now, but really, this game is long gone. Yeah. 
couple of runs for the Wildcats, but each time Kansas had the answer. Forced turnovers, got layups, easy baskets at the other end. They get sloppy at times, though. And the two losses, two of the three losses, they were out rebanded. And out rebanded by Texas and by Kansas State. Out rebanded them in the first matchup. They had a little chip on their shoulder here tonight. Sure did. Kansas, they really did. Yep. You can see it from the moment this game began. I think that court's been overplayed and overhyped. I don't think the kid meant it with any arrogance at all. He's just a confident kid in terms of Beasley. Quinn Stewart, short on the three. Beasley keeps his dribble alive, forces it up, and hits it. Unbelievable play. For him to come back with that ball showed the his incredible hands, showed the mastery of his hands. I mean, look at this here. He bobbles the ball, picks it up with his long arms, and still has the rotation, the backspin. My friends of Manhattan, you've been very fortunate to have a look at this guy for even one year. 30 points on the night for Beasley. Bill Walker, a non-factor tonight. Two points in 12 minutes. Foul trouble in the first half. As Young has called for the foul. Remember, Young only had one point on 0 for 14 shooting. Against Texas. Yeah, and their loss on a Monday against Texas. They got a big game. I mean, they play Colorado at home. They should win that. But the road game at Iowa State could really be big because if they go 9-7, and seven, all they got to do is remember last year, Bob Huggins' kids were 10-6 and six and did not get a big. I said young. I mean, Walker 0 for 14 in their last game. So Walker, their second leading scorer, has not done anything offensively for two games, whereas Sasha Khan has here tonight. Khan, Jackson, and Arthur have been aggressive in different periods of the game. Arthur early in the game. Then you had Jackson early in the second half. Zone for Kansas. Inside, Sutton gets free and lays it in. Passes hit by Dominique Sutton. But right now, trading baskets not nearly good enough for Kansas State. Now you got to make something happen with your defense, and that's not going to happen with the Kansas. way they can handle the basketball. Kansas. 30-second timeout for Kansas. Aaron Andrews with a report on Kansas great Danny Manning. You know, all night we've been talking about the great interior play by the Jayhawks. You know, I was a lot of the coaches for Kansas was telling me this guy is the one to credit. Danny Manning, 16 years in the NBA. They said he has worked so well with the bigs on this team, giving him a little tricks of the trade, everything that he learned in the NBA. This guy right here, Sasha Khan, was one of the players I was told that has benefited the most from Coach Manning and all his little tips inside the paint, guys. I tell you, Aaron, they were 12-8 in 1988, and it looked like the NIT was absolutely going to be their core. And all of a sudden, he just simply carried that team on his back, and he took up to that national title. Larry Brown did a masterful job coaching. They tell me, Roger Twyble, who I talked to, said Larry Brown was so emotional, sitting in a crowd, enjoying being here with the people at the big festivity, honoring 110 years of Kansas basketball. Hard to believe it's been 20 years since that national championship. Will they celebrate the 20th anniversary with a national title this year? They're certainly going to be in the hunt. Beasley, and he is fouled. Big Monday presented by Bud Light is on ESPN 2 at 7 Eastern. Great women's basketball, a meeting of two of the best programs in the nation. Number four Rutgers and number one UConn, a meeting on Monday night. ESPN is your exclusive home for the women's NCAA championship. The foul before the shot, K-State ball. Beasley has 30, the rest of the team 28. Beasley's got 33, and the rest of the team 28. But you know what? I really believe you'd rather have the 25 like in the first matchup with the win. Down by 18. Robinson is fouled. It'll be on Young. Uh, so we've been treated to so many great diaper dandies this year. Derek Rose is phenomenal. Uh, Memphis, Kevin Long. I think they're the three best. 
when you talk about Beasley, Rose, and Love of the Diaper Dandy class. There's some other great ones. Gordon, of oh, course. Oh, Jerry Bayless, Bayless is terrific. Gordon's phenomenal. Yeah. But you got to pick three. Yeah. I would take those right. three. Well, Johnny Flynn at Syracuse has have, had a terrific year. O.J. Mayo came in with all the hype and perhaps has not lived up to the hype. Well, he's had some great moments, yeah. though. He really has. Robinson. And the clock is Kansas' ally right now. I think their allies, their ability. Their <laughs> That's a good ally. Their talent. <laughs> they got some yeah. players. And Kansas' talent is the enemy of Kansas State right now. Kansas State's got to really regroup because this is four in a row now in terms of losses. And on your resume at this time of the year, that becomes a big red flag for that committee. Tom O'Connor and his people are going to do a great job. I know that. They're all over evaluating. There will be some tough choices. So many of the big conferences have so many interchangeable teams in the middle as Sharon Collins knocks it down, and the Jayhawks are piling on right now. Well, I guess we could eat some cookies. Becky, the cookie lady, sent a bunch of cookies here they for go. us. Yeah, Becky sent us cookies. Under four. Get out the cookies, baby. Bill Walker makes the loudest noise that he has made tonight. Wow. They look good. They look good, don't they? We gotta get our guy Doug Holmes to show these cookies that Becky did. <laughs> Bill Walker with just his second field goal of the night. You think about national championship, you think about teams that win six in a row. You certainly have to talk about North Carolina. You gotta talk about Duke's gonna be factored in here. I don't care about the lack of the post guy. I think in the tournament they're gonna play with a chip on their shoulder. Memphis, even though they got a little flaw shooting free throws and need consistency out of Dorsey, I think tournament time, you're gonna see them respond. UCLA, they're gonna be right there as well. And I tell you, a team that really will be a factor in the tournament because of their style of play, which is conducive to tournament play. And that is... There you go. Yeah, hey, hey. That's <laughs> send, him, send him to the truck. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Hey, Scott, those cookies are long gone, baby. I'm going to make it through the break. I'm going to get Scott some cookies. He does such a great job yes. about golf. I learned so much when I listen to him about the golf games. Hey, let me tell you this. The team I was talking about in the tournament that will be a factor, Georgetown, because of their style of play. When you look about tournament, teams get conservative. Georgetown always in the 60s. They will be a tough team to deal with tournament time. Well, keep an eye on SportsCenter with John and Scott. Georgetown Mark. Kent highlights today. The Hoyas pulled another one out. Jonathan Wallace was fouled with less than three seconds to go on a three-point attempt. Wow. Hit all three free throws, forced overtime, and the Hoyas won an overtime. You don't foul. We saw Bruce Pearl do it, but you got to do it at the right time. You don't foul a guy while he's going to shoot. Russell Robinson right into the chest of Gilbert who fouls him. His mom sitting here tonight, very proud. Step over to say hello. They got beautiful fans here. Right? They really love their basketball. They have such a passion and love for it. And now Lou Perkins got this place rolling big time. He and Larry Keating and Jim Marcioni, they got it rolling big time in football as well team that's in basketball been in the top 10 all season long an elite 18 a year ago with just about everybody back with one more year of experience and other than Sharon Collins who's coming back from the bruised knee but looks pretty healthy tonight they are healthy right now remember Brandon Rush was out early coming back from the knee surgery tough move by Walker and it goes he's a big time player we have not seen the real Bill Walker he got himself in foul trouble early and he's never been able to assert himself coming off the bad game against Texas weak side rebound by Gilbert a 15 point deficit a block shot by Russell Robinson they've been good defensively tonight Collins. Beasley's going to get his points. You know that. You just cannot stop him so talented. Good decision there by Russell Robinson. They need the clock to keep running more than they need extra points. I tell you, Rick Barnes has done a phenomenal job, even though they get beat today by Texas Tech, who is a real tough club to play down in Lubbock. Yep. Zeno but, had a good game. Bosco had a good game. But DJ Augustine, one of my old Americans. 
Collins. Rebound inside by Rush, knocked out of bounds by Walker with two minutes to go. Keep another eye on Rick Pitino's club at tournament time as well, Louisville. You talked about Texas Tech, you can see the Red Raiders. Monday night, Big Monday presented by Bud Light, a doubleheader first pit in West Virginia at 7 Eastern as the Mountaineers try to avenge an earlier heartbreaking one-point loss to Pitt. And Texas Tech right here to Kansas Senior Night here at Allen Fieldhouse should be an emotional night. See, now they really mindset and coaching the psychology becomes important for Pat Knight to get them off the high of that win and get ready for Kansas here on senior night. No I question. mean, that's part of coaching, coaching psychology. Listen to the spirit here in this building. They know their basketball and they love their basketball here in Lawrence. They appreciate winning basketball, they really do. Sometimes expectations get a little crazy, they don't think you should lose. But what beauty of the NCAA tournament, the reason the NCAA tournament is the best. I mean, Greg Shaheen and Tom Jordan, those guys do a phenomenal job. But the reason it's the best is because of the format. One bad night, the party's over. It's not four out of seven. He says, my mom's in the house. My mom's in the house. I can't disappoint my mom. Everybody, you know, they love their mom. His mom's in the house. Kansas has knocked down 11 threes in 22 tries as Jackson fouls Beasley on a three-point attempt. Rock Chalk Jayhawk has been the theme here tonight, and everybody in the white uniform has contributed. I mentioned those athletic directors and people doing a great job. What about Chris Tyson and all the SIDs? They do a phenomenal job across America. I think they're some of the most underpaid people, the incredible job sports information directors do. And I understand the SIDs, I mean, it's you're up for the Hall of Fame, you get flowers tonight, now the SIDs are giving you an award? Oh, you, where'd you learn that? Uh, I got, I got people. I got people. What? Yeah, tell I, me about I, it. I'm not familiar. Well, it hasn't been, hasn't been announced yet, but I guess uh, I will be the recipient, and I'm very proud to say the Keith Jackson Eternal Flame Award given by the SIDs for contributions to intercollegiate athletics. And I can't tell you how proud because of the respect I have for that man's name. And the previous winners, I have great respect for Dick Eppenberg and Rosa Gatti. Well, congratulations. It's, it's been announced now. <laughs> congratulations. Oh, thank you, buddy. <laughs> 30 seconds to you go. You know everything. I'll tell you, it's unbelievable. <laughs> what a night for the Kansas oh, Jayhawks. Oh. They came here fired up. Their fans were fired up because of the defeat in Manhattan a few weeks ago. The self was fired up before the game. And remember, he's coming to our event, so if you want to come to our event to help kids battle with cancer, oh, look at that off the glass. Just go to my website, pickvitalonline.com, May 16th. When we honor Bob Knight and Pat Summer. What a great environment. 39 tonight for Michael Beasley, but not nearly enough. Kansas 88, Kansas State 74, as the Jayhawks thrash the Wildcats here at a sold-out Allen Fieldhouse. 36-2 in their last 38 games in this rivalry. They avenge the January 30th defeat in Manhattan. A team effort by Kansas, led by Brandon Rush, who had a very good night. Darrell Arthur, Sharon Collins, Mario Chalmers, you name it. They contributed tonight for the Jayhawks. Absolutely. They came out with purpose defensively. They got Beasley and Walker in foul trouble. Personally, I don't think the foul trouble would have affected the score tonight because this team was focused, ready to play, and prepared to play and win. Aaron Andrews standing by with a Bill Self. All right, Coach. Well, last time you guys matched up against Kansas State, players told me you were zombies. They weren't mentally there. What did you think about the focus tonight? I thought we focused good. We just didn't guard Beasley. Or he's really good, one of the two. And I, th I think he's really good. But uh, now we had good focus tonight. I thought uh, Russell and, and Sharon and Brandon all had great games. And, and uh, it was a good win. We were very active. Well, it's a great win considering now you are tied with Texas in the Big 12. Two games left. I mean, what does that mean down the stretch? 
Yeah. Well, they've got two home games left, and, and, and we play uh, obviously a good Tech team uh, Monday that you know that uh, uh, beat Texas today, and then we still got to go to A&M. So we still got a long road, but but uh, you know we played better, and we couldn't be happier to be in this position. At least we have a chance. All right, coach. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. All right, Aaron. Thank you, Bill. Self Jayhawks go to 26 and three on the season, 11 and three in a Big 12 play, and move into a tie atop the Big 12 standings with Texas. Sports Center is coming up next year on ESPN again. The final from the fog, 88 to 74, in favor of the Jayhawks. For more on this game, we'll be over on ESPN News in just a moment to wrap things up. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Dick Vitale, Airman Andrews, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Dan Schulman. Good night from Lawrence, Kansas. Sports Center is next.